several years ago, Wood Magazine did a project. Um, now that I think about it, it's um, March of 2000. It's been almost 20 years. That's pretty hard for me to believe. Anyway, it was a Wood Turner's walking stick. And um, I wasn't really a Wood Turner at the time, and you can tell that by looking at this. But the article, I, I just really liked, I really liked the idea of the article. And um, so I decided to make one. And then I made several for Christmas gifts, and I've made several more over the years. Um, one of the neat things about this is it had a little compass in the lid, in the, in the, in the handle. And um, you could take that compass out, and there was a little cavity in there uh, for maybe matches or a map. Or whatever. Um, it's got finger grooves for the handle and they're comfortable. The walking stick, the project was designed so a person could make it on what um, they called a, a normal size lathe. You didn't need a bed extension and you didn't need a long bed lathe. It's made actually in four pieces. The, it glues up into two halves that split apart in the middle. So you can store this behind the seat in your car, under the floorboard, in a drawer, um, in a knapsack. Then when you're ready to use it, just put it together and you're on your way. I'm going to make one in this video. It'll probably be more than one video, two, maybe three. I have to do the handle a little differently. Um, because it's like I, I've searched and searched for a replacement for that compass and I just can't find find them anywhere and so I'm just going to make one without the compass um, everything else is the same this is a this is a good project for a novice it, it looks more difficult than it is it's a step-by-step -step project and um, I hope you enjoy it I'm going to do the handle first First thing I'm going to make is the handle. I've got a piece of ash here. It's an inch and a half wide by an inch and three quarter wide. Um, about 11 inches long. That's more material than I need. But I'm going to do some hand work on this and it gives me a little extra room. It, um, I will also use the, the piece left over. I'll use that for a, a friction drive on a couple of the other pieces. So I'm going to put it between centers. The first thing I'm going to do is put a tenon on one end so I can mount it in my chuck for drilling. I'll use a 3 8 bedan for that. I'm going to drill a 5 8 hole in this end. Plan calls for one half, but I like a 5 8 a little better. I'm going to make it about three quarters of an inch deep. I'm 
I'll put a cone center on my one-way life center. Um, you get a get an aluminum one, but I'm going to use one made out of wood because I want to do some tooling on this end. I'm going to measure two and three quarter from um, this end. And then um, mark that. And mark that on th three sides. wood magazine plan says finger slots should be about three quarters of an inch if you have big hands you may want them a little larger if you have small hands you may want them a little smaller so I've got my divider set for three quarters of an inch so I'm going to mark four finger slots and mark those on three sides Okay, I'm going to round this um, edge a little bit. I don't want to get into any of the rest of this, just this, this quarter inch projection. this surface round. I'm going to transfer those pencil marks to this surface. Okay, I want to be an inch and a half in diameter on my handle. Set my calipers for an inch and a half and get myself a target out here. Okay, I'm going to start forming these finger slots and um, don't like that one. I'm going to use a 3 8 bowl gouge for that. Even though this is a spindle turning and I could use a spindle gouge, 
I've got a, a, I'm cutting a lot of air and I got an interrupted cut and a bull gouge is a little beefier than a spindle gouge and I just am more comfortable with it so I'm going to form this cove and take it down to an inch and a half and then form these finger slots Looking at the back side of this, by how far apart these are, it will tell me about how good my depth is, how uniform it is, and that's not too bad. Um, I don't want to connect. I don't want to connect these. I can get them. I can get them closer than that if I want to, but I don't want to connect them because then I'm less than an inch and a half diameter. So now I'm going to make this this cove on the top of the handle, and then. Um, take a little bit more out of there maybe and then um, we'll form the back side of this handle Okay, now it's time for some hand work. Um, this might look a little intimidating to do this by hand. Um, it, it really goes pretty fast, and these grooves are kind of a road map for how much material material you want to take off. I'm going to start with a um, hand plane, a number four Stanley Smoother. block plane. Take a little lighter cut. Refine the shape a little bit. Thank you. 
have moved to a carpenter's rasp. sanding block. I think this has 120 grit on it. Just finish smoothing that. That really feels pretty good. 